Hello Art Attackers, it's Chris Van Hillo and here we are again doing resin during our Zoom Art Attack Friday class. Here are two cats that I made jigs for. The cat on the right I used a UV resin and I used uh, packing tape as my background. UV resin does not like packing tape. So the cat on the left I just decided to leave it open. This is also a UV resin piece that I did. I'm gonna, oh, by the way, I'm shooting this from our new photo booth at uh, Taylor. Isn't this nice? It has nice. It has lights and a little box. I'm gonna try to zoom up here. Um, I took some National Geographic pages and I just put them in the background. I did not make a dam for this. I painted on the resin and uh, then I put it under the light and it sets up so fast I didn't have to worry about the dam. There's a real interesting thing that happened with the UV resin. The UV resin kind of reacted with the National, National Geographic paper and it, it gets, it's got this really weird crazing on it. It's almost like um, it's almost like when you put a glaze on a a piece of pottery that uh, it doesn't want to accept it and it kind of crazes. So I don't know if that's because of the surface of the National Geographic, you know, how it works so well with the Citrusol because it's clay-based uh, printing. So maybe the resin uh, was kind of having like a chemical reaction, uh, kind of like it was having a chemical reaction with the alcohol inks. So I'm going to do a, a cat and I just found a simple little drawing on the internet and I'm basically just going to lay this down on a ceiling tile, acoustical ceiling tile, rather than nail it into wood. Once I have the wire shaped, I'm then going to put it down on top of this I don't think this is clay based. I've tried to put a nail at every pivot point or just to secure as I come up. I can't go straight from here to here and get that leg to have a nice curve. So I've tried to come up at every pivot point and I'm now going to take my embroidery floss and I might actually tape the end of this down because it's kind of a pain to hold on to. So I'm giving myself a little bit of an extra tail here because that's what's going to uh, be put down into my little stand that I created. And at some point I'm going to have to go on the inside here. So those are probably going to have to go to the inside. This one comes to the outside. And I'm just using the embroidery floss so that I can determine how much wire needs to be cut so that there's less waste. It's also not a bad idea to uh, go around with the embroidery floss, just kind of do a trial run. Okay, so now I know how long I need to cut my wire. Another good reason to use the embroidery floss is uh, it's kind of like a practice run, so you can see if you've missed uh, any pivot points that might be important. I'm going to use 18 gauge. Here's this big thick electrician's wire that um, Sarah, Sarah had me try. and. Um, so I, I did not take the housing off, the plastic, I left the plastic on, and then, uh, oh my God, this is supposed to be a cat, it kind of, I don't know what, it, she says it looks like a lemur. And then um, this, this one that I did, I did take the, 
the plastic housing off and then I torch this uh, to try to soften up the metal a little bit and then I shaped it um, torched it again and then hammered it before I cut out my background and did my resin. So this one went through quite a bit of work. It was kind of fun. So, Okay, I'm going to cut my wire and see if I can get this thing wrapped. So I'm just going to put a little hole in the bottom of this wire. And I'm going to uh, use a nail just to try to hold this in place. Kind of like I did the tape. And it's probably not going to work because it's probably going to rip the heck out of this acoustical tile, but I think that if I have it secured, uh, that might be my friend. So, okay, here we go. And I need to think for a minute. So I think I'm going to just start weaving in and out right from the get-go here. And again, you can always... Now, when it's on this tile, it's not like wood. So when you go to manipulate it and push it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to pull the acoustical tile a little bit but you know what I don't really care this was um I've already made a mistake I'm gonna go this way this was uh, bound for the trash so it really doesn't matter I don't care if this tile gets messed up okay so here we go I'm coming around this leg and already I see that uh, I want this to come out a little so I'm just gonna give it a little tweak okay this wire is um it's flapping all over the place on me, so try to hold on, dude. Okay, I'm going to come inside here because I know I have to come outside here. And I'm trying to stay as flat as I can. So I'm going to take a popsicle stick and just really try to push that down. I'm going to come around the tail. And I think I'll stay, you know what, I'm just going to stay right on the outside there because I like, I don't know if you guys can see that, but I like, I like the bend that that gave me. So I think right here I'm going to need to come inside. Yes, I am. So, you know, just go really slow as you're coming around. Okay, now this guy, I'm, I think I'm going to have to come through this one and around the next one. So I'm trying to stay, I want to try to stay as flat as I can. Okay, so I'm just going to pinch that a little bit with my finger to try to get it up there. And then I'm going to stay on the outside for two. And then right here I'm going to have to go inside. I'm just pushing it down. That one's going to have to come back to the outside. So far, so good. So I'm just pushing it down, trying to keep it nice and flat because I don't want to have to build a dam around this. Okay, so now I'm going to come up, and I think I'm going to switch to the outside. There we go. Okay. And I can see right there that I need a little bend for the head. So I'm just going to take this stick and see if I can bend it. Or I can use my pliers, and I'm gonna I'm gonna tweak it with my wrist. Okay, there we go. All right. So far, so good. Now I'm going to come up, and I'm gonna have to weave in and out here, or I will not get the dimension. So I'm I'm gonna hold this nail as I try to bend that wire a little bit there we go now that's his ear and I think I can live with that I think that's a nice ear okay now this is the top of his head so again I'm holding this wire and I'm not gonna pull it yet I'm gonna push it down here and I like how it did that now I'm gonna hold this nail and I'm going to push it down and give it a little bit of a tug there. I like that. Okay, and I might take the pliers here and just tweak it a little bit. Okay, there we go. I notice I say okay a lot when I do these videos. I think I'm trying to, 
think I'm trying to reassure myself. All right, I like that. Okay, I'm gonna have to come inside this one. So I'm gonna hold the wire down. And you saw why I had to come inside, because if I stay to the outside, it, you know, it's not gonna give me any definition at all. All right, so I'm gonna hold this flat. I think I can stay inside for a while. I think right here I'm going to switch to the outside. Yeah, that was the thing to do. Okay. Now, I have to come up and around for the inside of the legs. So here we go. Pinch this together with my fingers. I'm just going to hold this down with a popsicle stick or whatever this is. And I'm going to come, oh boy, I'm going to be really close to running out of wire. No, actually, I'm just used to having so much extra. I think I actually did a pretty good job. Now, this leg is going to be a little short, and this leg is going to come down like that. And guess what? I'm okay with that. Maybe he's standing up on his hind leg. Now, the problem is it's flopping up here. So when I get this off of here, I am going to have to work it over the edge of the table and try to get it as flat as I can. I'm going to just go ahead and take my nails out. These are those headless nails. And I guess it doesn't, um, if you're going to take the nails out, it doesn't matter what kind of nails you're using. Um, I like using the headless nails because you can almost lift this out of there without having to take the nails out as I attempt to show you right now. Okay, and then there he is. All right, so here is our floppy cat. And there's absolutely nothing flat about that at all. Kind of like that, okay? This is a really low tack painter's tape, so it should be relatively easy to get off. I'm going to try bringing it over the edge of the table and just holding on to it and bending it a bit. Okay, that helped a little bit. I'll do the same with the head. Holding the neck and bending it down. That did a little bit. Still not very flat, but you're just going to try to get it as flat as you can. And again, you can try burnishing, but the thing with burnishing is you have to make sure that you're really supporting all your little points or you'll, you'll actually make it worse. I'm also going to try hammering this, but sometimes hammering can make it even worse. I'm going to take my map, and I thought it might be fun if I just did it at an angle like this. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the map. Problem solving on the sly here. I've made two little struts. What I do is I'm going to paint my area with resin. And then I'm going to tape these little struts down outside of the resin area. And I think it will help to hold, hold the wire flatter. I think this is, think this is going to be awesome. Okay. The resin that we're using is a UV photopolymer resin, and it is pre-mixed, which is kind of nice. Another thing that's nice is this paintbrush I used several hours ago. The resin doesn't cure unless it's under the UV light, so the paintbrush, I I can still use it. it. You know, it hasn't hardened up, so that's kind of nice too. One thing I'm not particularly fond of with this resin, this particular resin, it dries a yellow. Here is an example of how it dries. See that yellow? Notice my ring? I don't have my ring on today if I'm naked without my ring. So here is how this dries. And I think on this map background, it's it's not going to matter. As I've lectured and lectured and lectured, safety. So I'm going to put on an N95. It does say to shake this, shake up the bottle before use. All right, so I'm shaking it up. 
I'm not really going to worry about if I spill it on the table a little bit because guess what? I can just wipe it off. So I really don't need much. I'm just going to pour a little bit in here. That's really probably too much. And I'm going to just take my paintbrush and do some very uh, light coats, okay? I'm going to add my struts. Before I push down, I just want to have the other piece of tape in place. All right, and there's the second strut. Just to kind of hold this down. Maybe. Hopefully. Okay. Here we are in the kitchen, and we have the UV flashlight. Let me see if I can show that to you. This is my set. Wow, this dries so fast. I can already see it setting up. As a matter of fact, I was wondering if I should take these struts off because I really don't want those to stick. So I'm just kind of moving this around to make sure it, I don't know if that tail got done well. And then I think what I'll do is um, I'm going to cut the outline and then I may go ahead and add a, a second layer because I do right here. I feel like that neck could have been pushed down a little better. Let's see how it cuts. Well, guess what? It didn't stick. So, I'm going to try it again off camera. I've got plenty of resin. I'm just going to put it on this map, which was my first choice, and I changed my mind. I guess it just really wanted to be on this map. The only difference from last time is I put the struts down in advance this time. And I'm just going to be careful that I don't paint the struts. Take it underneath the struts. Okay, see right here, I missed a big spot. Pretty easy to see. And it looks like I'm missing along this border, too. Okay, this seems to be pretty dry, so I took the struts off. And I'm going to go and apply another coat. And uh, we'll bring it back under the light. Probably do two or three coats before I cut it off. <laughs> I just love this little guy. Okay, so it looks like... It looks like this stuff is dry. I'm afraid to cut it because if it doesn't work, I might be canceling class on Friday. Uh, okay, here we go. And I'm thinking, just don't cut it so close. Who cares? I can always go in and trim it, you know, trim it closer. And here are the final cats. The one on the right is the cat that I just did for you guys with the map. The one in the middle is the one I used the packing tape on that had such a terrible reaction. And the one on the left is the one that didn't get anything at all. <laughs> it was so bent. Let's see if I can zoom up. Oops, wrong way. So, I really like the little map guy. He's cute. It's very difficult to get in there around those edges without a, a really sharp pair of, um, like, cuticle scissors. So, I'll, I'm going to take that home and work on it tonight. Okay, guys, this may conclude our class in resin. I'm getting kind of tired of resin, and I think I want to move on to something else. So, uh, we'll talk about that at the end of the video in to see which direction we'd like to go in. Okay, thanks for joining us today. Stay inspired. Stay creative. 
Stay in touch.